And this is just a bendy to everybody outside who I can hear on the bouncing castles screaming with joy for everybody just to come inside and even if you're in the Langar Hall once you've finished um, having Langar and um, just come inside please and just give us your darshan and you can maybe learn and take something away today. It will all be in English so just a bendy to everybody to come in. We've come here to see the Sangat today so it'd be great to see you. Um, and today it's the Shahidi Purab, as you all know, of Tantan Sri Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj. And before we look, if before we go into the Shahidi, um, we'll have a look at two Mata who were behind them, two Mata that drew them into this path. Mama, we know that Guru Sab they didn't need anyone to draw them, but it's Sharda Diya Galah and we shouldn't forget these. These things are what. These things can make our sikhi, these things can bring people in. So these shabda the agala which we're going to share today. And when we look at the world today, we're all influenced by something. Whether it's been influenced, whether we recognize it or not, there's always something that is having an effect on us, that is having an impression on us. And a lot of it is the media, the television, the radio, the musical artists out there, any sort of artist, whether it's you know a written form or like a verbal form, the internet, all sorts of things are constantly, constantly in our face, constantly putting images into our mind, putting words into our mouth. These things are all around us. And we may overlook the importance of having a positive role model in our life, but there's one person who we should always use as a reference for our life, and that is Tantan Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. 
and they haven't overlooked at the importance of having a positive role model in our life. Marriage tell us, Babaniya Kahaniya, Put so put karen. Je Satagur Pave, so man le, Sei karam karen. The Guru is saying, make sure, not just our children, Babaniya Kahaniya Put, we're all the Put Sabguru Sab. Whether we're girls, whether we're, whether we're males, female, it doesn't matter. We're all the pots, we're all the children of Guru Granth Sahib. So Maharaj is talking to all of us. And in Sikhi, there's no age. The soul is, is beyond age, it's beyond time. It's only the body that is, is um, subject to time. So we too are the pot as well, not just our young, youngsters. Babaniya, Kahaniya, by telling them the Kahaniya, by telling them the stories, of our forefathers, they become from just an average path to a support, to a great being, to become a great child. And Mother Gujar Korji, that is exactly what she did. Mother Gujar Kaur lived this Pangti in her, their life, and those Shaibs are there. They became support. They became great because they looked at the they looked at the Shahidi, they looked at the Shahidi of Guru Arjun Dev Ji, Mother Ganga, Mother Gujar Kaur Ji, sitting in that Thanda Buraj. This was the Saki that she told them, the same Saki that we're going to share today. And what did that allow the Shaibzadeh to do? It wasn't a Saki that they heard. The Saki are the Jeevan of These Saki are make the Jeevan of the Gursikhs. Kahaniya put so put karen. Je sat guru paave. Paave comes from the word love. Whatever is pleasing, whatever is loving to the Guru's heart, so man le. By hearing the stories, of the of the Babe, they say we too want to be like that. We apa we Guru Sahib wale bani jaiye. Let let us become the children of the Guru. Jo saathu Guru jay saathu Guru paave so manle soi sahi karam kare and they will start doing those actions too. And I'll tell you something quite funny. I laugh for you. Know, you might not laugh. I'm not good at jokes, okay? But um, there was I teach Punjabi sometimes to the younger children, and. A lot of them have these really funny Spider-Man bags and in that bag is a Spider-Man pencil case. Next to that Spider-Man pencil case is a, a Spider-Man pencil, Spider-Man pen um, book, Spider-Man pack of tissues. So this child is constantly thinking of Spidey and some of them bring with them the little figures of Spider-Man with them and now they can't live without this Spider-Man. And what do you, I bet when they go home, that's probably all they watch is Spidey, Spidey, Spidey. Who, what are they going to want to be? What's, what is their Simranan? It's Spider-Man. But if they have something else, if they have the Babaniya of their, of their Guru Sahibs, of their forefathers, maybe they too want to be like that too. So before we look at the Kahani of Siri Guru Arjun Dev Ji Shahidi, let's look at where did the Guru Gaddi come into their family. So before we look at even Mata Pani Ji, because of Benji that was saying before, they were singing the Shabad, and that if, if, if a son is full of anger, Je at the Krop, Krop coming from the word Krod, Je at the Krop, Kare Kartaya, even if the child is full of anger and reacts to the mother in anger, Je at the Krop, Kare Kartaya, Tabi Jeet Narakasmaya, and that the mother doesn't keep this in her mind, she doesn't hold this vengeance, she doesn't hold this anger in her heart, she doesn't say, I want to take it back out on this child. There's so many other dish there. But Mother, Maharaj has always given a pranam. He's used so many examples of a mother. Again and again, a mother comes through Guru Bani. So we're going to look at the mother of Guru Arjun Dev Ji. But before we look at that, we're going to look at Bibi, Bibi Amro, the daughter of Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj, Angad Dev Ji Maharaj. The daughter of Guru Arjun, Angad Dev Ji Maharaj, Bibi Amro Ji, what was she doing? Where did her Sikhi start from? Bibi Ji Sikhi started from her father themselves, Guru Angad Dev Ji, who started writing the letters, who started compiling the Bani of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, who made the forms, who created Guru Mukhi. They made sure that their daughters, Bibi Amro Ji and Bibi Anokki Ji, they made sure that both of their daughters were learned Sikhur Sikhs. They made sure that their daughters were able to sink eat them. And it might not seem like a big deal, but don't forget, this was in that time where women were really classed as really even a human being, let alone being someone who was educated, let alone somebody who was being empowered and was being put at the forefront to carry forward Sikhi. Bibi Amroji 
was taught by Guru Angad Dev Ji themselves to read Gurbani. They were taught by Guru Angad Dev Ji themselves. Can you imagine Maharaj is sitting there as your Ustad, sitting there teaching Bibiji how to do Kirtan. And then when Bibiji got married, they said, when you go to your Sura Prabhupada, I want you to go in that home, but don't sit full of ego. Don't sit there thinking that you're the daughter of the Guru. I want you to go in there with the Atadi Nimrata. I want you to go into that home and you carry doing parjar of Guru Sikhi. You keep doing parjar of your father, of Guru Nanak's household, not even their father. They, even Guru Angad Dev Ji would have said the, the parjar of Guru Nanak's message. So Bibiji, when they go into that house, who overhears her singing Geet and she used to have, it is said by the historians that she, Mataji had such a sweet voice. She used to sing with Prem, Sharda, Pavana, and she used to be singing these Shabbats. And then she went into that home and she was singing a Kirtan. She was singing a Shabbat of Tantan Siri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And when Guru Amr Das Ji had heard this, they couldn't help but be attracted to this energy. They couldn't help but want this darshan of Guru Nanak. So they go with Bibi Ji and they go to have a darshan of Guru Angad Dev Ji. And from there, that's when Guru Amr Das Ji became a Sikh of Guru Nanak. And from there, Marajit Bakshish on them and they became the Guru. Marajine Sikhnu Guru Banata. So this is the Nanna Ji. Guru Amr Das Ji is the Nanna Ji of Guru Arjun Dev Ji. And this is why we've just, just gone over that. And from there, who is the daughter then of Guru Amr Das Ji? I said her name, Bibi Pani Ji. We may all know her of Bibi Pani Ji, but it's said that her name was actually first Mohani Ji. Because in, in those times, in the Parani Jamanit, Idda Hundasi, if they had a girl and a boy, they'd give them the same name. They'd have like a rhyming name. So if you had Roshan, you'd have Roshani. Like in this country, you could have Martin and Martina, Philip and Philippa. It's just like the equivalent. So Mataji, their brother's name was Mohan, Mohanji. The son of Guru Amr Das Ji was Mohanji. The brother of Bibi Amroji, Bibi Pani Ji was Mohanji. So her name was Mohani. Mohani is something that's enticing, something that's beautiful. And we hear that name again and again. We say it every day. Gabe Mohaniya Man Mohan Surag Maj Bibi Ji, but she was, an, she was a Mohani. But she wasn't the Mohan, the enticement of this world didn't overtake her heart. Maharaj says, Asa Mansa Mohani, Gur Thak Sach Bol. We have all got Asa Mansa, but Mataji, her Mohan, her ass, sorry, her desire was was stilled by the by the word of truth, by the Guru. Her Guru, Guru Amr Das Ji, she never served them as just her father. She saw them as more than that. She saw this is my Guru, and with much devotion, she used to serve her father. So Guru Bibi Amroji, Bibi Pani Ji, sorry, Bibi Pani Ji, she used to serve Guru Amr Das Ji with utmost devotion as a Guru. And there's one time you may have heard where Mata Ji was doing seva with Guru Amr Das Ji. And one evening, Guru Amr Das Ji, they're meditating on Wai Guru. And they're in this samadhi, they're in this pure bliss. This, their mind has gone to a different place, they're in a state of samadhi. They've gone, they've looked inwards, they're not connected with this body anymore, and their mind has gone to somewhere else. Their mind has gone to the Jalan of Wai Guru. And they're sitting there and they're meditating. And Bibi Parni Ji, she sees that her father's sitting on this manji side, and on this manji side is a leg. And this leg is weaker than the other three. This leg is actually broken. And what she sees, she sees my father's meditating on a Kalapur Kuwai Guru. They're in Samadhi. What can I do? I can't let the Guru fall. They're sitting on a Manji Sahib. One, I can't let them fall. I can't let the Guru of the Sikhs fall. Two, I can't be responsible for allowing their lift to be broken. If they fall, then they're, they're going to be torn away from the Jaran of a Kalapur Kuwai Guru. So she does what's necessary to keep the Guru standing where they are. She takes her hand and she places it underneath that broken leg. 
And as you can imagine, you may have seen wood that's broken, wood that has splinters in it when it's not cleanly cut. So Mataji, she, they put their hand under this leg that's broken and they hold it up with their hand. And Guru Sahib is sitting on there. And Maharaj is in Samadhi for a long time. Overnight, Mataji stole that. She still hasn't moved. Kei kente nangge, kei kariya nangge ya. But Mataji ne apna hath ni pare kitha. She keeps her hand there. And eventually, over time, those splinters go deeper and deeper and deeper into her hand. They go deep and they start to draw blood from Mata's hand. But she still doesn't move, she still doesn't flinch. She still remains steadfast. She keeps her hand there and eventually Maharaj comes out of Samadhi and they look and they say, Pani, you've been sitting there? You've been sitting there all this time? But the wife, you, you know, you didn't you need to rest? Mataji doesn't say anything. Mataji doesn't say anything to say, Maharaj, well, I couldn't do this, I, I couldn't move your, look at my hand. Mataji just smiles at her father. The Maharaj looks across and they see, they say, one, um, they say, what are you holding? What is in your hand? And she smiles and she says, Maharaj, it's your manji. And they look closer and they see that her hand's bleeding. And they take her hand. The father takes his daughter's hand. The father, the guru, takes his sixth hand. There's two rishtas here. Ek hai guru naal, ek hai pita ji naal. So the father takes their own daughter's hand. And this is very important for us to learn today as well. When I go, my mother takes us to other places where Sangat are. Often we be say, Benji, our fathers don't even speak to us as daughters. They don't really have much of a relationship with us. They don't know how to talk to us. And it's a benthi to the fathers as well. Don't push your daughters out. Speak to them. They are your daughters, just as your sons are. Build a relationship with them. I don't know if it's, it's a Punjabi mentality. But your daughters, just like Guru Angad Dev Ji empowered his daughter, you too can empower your daughters as well. They're not, we're not aliens, okay? We, we're not. You can speak to us. We will listen and we will understand. You shouldn't be afraid either to be able to speak to your daughter. But Maharaj takes their daughter's hand and they start taking the splinters out one by one themselves. And after they've taken the splinters out, they've cleaned their hands and they start wrapping a patti around Maharaj's hand. And they care for their daughter. This is what Maharaj does for his Sikh. This is what a Guru does for his Sikh. Maharaj was showing us how to be a parent as well. There's so many lessons that we can take from our gurus if we look close enough. And then, this is the same Martha that was given the name by the Sangat. They say her name was Mohni because she stayed that much in Bana. She was, her life became Bana that her name, the Sangat started calling her Pani. This is where Martha Ji got the name Pani Ji. And it's an easy way for you to remember Guru Arjun Dev Ji's mother's name because we will look at this influence. How did Maharaj sit on Adati Tavi? Where did they get the shakti? Where did they get the strength to remain in Pana? They got it from in Pana. They got that strength from their mother, Bibi Pani. He was born from that womb of Mwada Paniji. Then they became able to live in Pana too. Mother Paniji. There was a time when Mother Ji got married to Bhai Jet Haji, who later became the fourth guru. So now we see that actually they've got uh, their Gorum, they've got Rishtadar with the second Guru, Guru Angad Dev Ji, their father is Guru Amr Das Ji, the third Guru. Their husband, Mata Pani Ji's husband, is the fourth Guru, Guru Angad Dev, Guru Amr Das Ji, Guru Ram Das Ji. Their father is the third Guru, Guru Amr Das Ji. Their father, their husband, is the fourth Guru, Guru Amr da Ram Das Ji. Okay, I'll keep probably doing that, so just bear with it. And their fifth has their fifth Guru, is Guru Arjun Dev Ji, who is their son. So just the, to there, you can see that they've got some bond, they've got a relationship, they've got a link with four Guru Sahibs. And we know that the Guru Gaddi stayed within that family. So when Mata Ji had their hand under that Manji Sahib, Guru Sahib said, they blessed her, they said, Pani Ji, they said, ask for anything you want. They said, ask for anything. To see, inni seva kiti Guru Nanade Karvich, 
as a Sikh, the Guru wanted to bless his Sikh, but they were so tutta, they were so happy. Tutta, tutta sahib, jo mile, whatever the Guru Sahib wanted to give to his Sikh, he was so happy. Mataji said nothing. He said, I have everything. I get to serve you. My dolly is full. Maharaj, what else could I want? You, I've got you. And Maharaj says again, no pani, mongo kosh. Ask something. The Guru really wants to bless you with something. Maharaj, Guru Amar Das, he can say, Asa mansa, asa mansa kare sab koi. We have all got desires and hopes. Asa mansa kare sab koi. But Mataji, she was in the Sangat of Guru Amar Das Ji all her life. The Guru had created her Asa Mansa, had converted it. So all that she wanted was the Guru. All she wanted was Wai Guru. That's the great blessing of being in the Sangat of Guru Sahib. We all have desire, but if that desire is converted into the correct way, then that desire could be something positive. And it would be Naam. It would be more learning more Gurbani to be in the Sangat of Guru Six, to be in the Sangat of Guru Granth Sahib Ji to start changing, to take on the qualities and the virtues of the Guru and this will start becoming our only desire in life. We won't have desire for anything else. Asa Mansa Mohini, Guru Thak, Guru Thak and that Maharaj, Guru Sahib will change that desire for anything. He'll stop it with such a bull. I explained that Bhunti already. So Maharaj is asking Ma Mataji there, he's saying, what can I bless you with? And on the third time, Mataji says, Maharaj, just keep the Gurgaddi in the Sodhi family. Keep the Gurgaddi in, in this family. Why? Because nobody else is going to be able to take what the what Guru Sahib is going to have to go through. They said, there's no family that else, that else is going to be out there that's going to be able to take on this, the weight of being in this Gurgaddi. No one else is going to be able to be a steadfast, a stead strong. He said, keep the Gurgaddi within your family. And Mara says, very well. And from there, who were Mata Paniji's great grandsons? Great, great, great grandsons. Her great grandson was Guru Teg Bahadur Ji, who gave their seas. The great grandson was Satme Padsha, Guru Harai Sahib Ji. And their great, great, great grandsons were Atme, Atme Padsha, Sri Har Krishna Sahib Ji. And their um, Guru Atme Padshah Sahib Ji's cousins, who were the Jar Sahib Zadeh. So this is the family that came from the womb of Mata Pani Ji. And who was her son? Her son was Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj. And they had that strength from their mother to be able to sit on a Tatitavi. If you try and get me to even thala prashadana, I'll start doing this if my fingertip just even touches it slightly. If you give me a hot prashad, then never mind touching the tati devi, never mind touching that hot plate. Even if you put prashad in my hands, I'll be tossing it from one hand to the other. But who was Guru Arjun Dev Ji? Let's think, if we just close our eyes for a moment, imagine a time. Just think of a time when you got burnt, whether it was by hot water, maybe the hot tap was too hot. Maybe you drank something and your tongue was burnt and you could feel it for days. Just think of a moment when you were burnt or something hot touched you and how did that affect you? And then we can really appreciate when Guru Arjun Sahib Ji was sitting on that Tati Tavi and really feel it as if we were there. And sometimes we are blessed when we get a chance to feel something like this. Maharaj is so great that he gives us chances to feel that. That's how great our Guru is. Instead of, we just need the eyes to see and we can ask for Guru Sahib to bless us with those eyes. So that role model in Guru Arjun Dev Ji's life was Mata Pani. Mata Pani Ji, there was a time, and this is a lesson that we can all learn from, okay? Mata Pani Ji, they were sitting, they have just been newly married to Bhai Jetha Ji. And the Sangat sees Mata Ji sitting there. But Mata Ji, she had a very sadha jivan. She had a very plain, very simple jivan. So she ate simple, she dressed simple. And she spoke very humbly as well. And anybody that would go to her, they'd feel, they'd feel the comfort of being in her presence. And Mataji, one time they were sitting with their Sangat, with her Suheliya, she was sitting with her friends. And the Sangat go past and they see Guru Sahib's daughter. And they think, oh, she looks a bit plain, huh? 
maybe the Guru Sahib didn't want to give her too much from the, you know, the Sangat's money. Maybe Guru Sahib is being very humble. So the Sangat think, well, we can still out of love for Guru Sahib. We can still give her some clothes that look very nice. We can still give her some kapre with a lot of stare, something that, you know, is really fitting for the daughter of a Guru. So the Sangat get together and with their love, with their sharda for the Guru, they start buying all these things. So they buy some nice gane. They buy Mataji some really nice suits, some decorated suits. And they go to Guru Amr Das Ji and they do a bandhi and they say, Maharaji, we have bought these, these things for your daughter. Please, would you accept them? Please, Maharaji, to see a karo. Because Jovi Guru Sikh Danga, Mahapuruk have said a very great lesson and they said, when a Sikh ever gives something, if you give a Sangat anything, don't think that you are giving to them. Saddam man ke ho jaya ho na chai da? Aapa sochna ke Gur Sikha ne ehi chidja eh vastuanu pardaan kaat de liya. Anything that we use for ourselves is a waste. But if we give it to a Gur Sikh, if we give it with the Pavna that this is Guru Sikh that is going to have this, then they will make that thing approved. They will make that thing worthwhile. So Jada Appa Dhena, we're doing bhanti to the Sangat. We never say that I gave to you. We're going to take into our life. Get to see enu safal karuge. You'll actually make this worth having. And that will remind us again and again that when we go for our lekha, that we're going somewhere. Just to keep in mind that we're not here. So little things like this that we can take into our life. So the Sangha that comes to Mataji and they say, Maharaj, they call Mat they go to Guru Sahib, sorry, they go to Guru Sahib and say, Guru Sahib, Please accept these. We've bought these as gifts for your daughter. But Maharaj is under Jami. And they say, Satabachan, and they say to the Sangat, they say, Go and go and somebody go and get Bibi Pani Ji. So Bibi Pani Ji comes. And Maharaj says, Bibi Pani, the Sangat have bought some beautiful gifts for you. And Mahata Ji looks, and she looks over to where, this, where those gifts are placed. And she looks at them and she says, Sujay Pacha, she puts her hands together. She goes, Maharaj, you know that I have no love for these. You know that I'm not attached to these false gene. Maharaj, you know what my heart truly wants. But Maharaj had to show the Sangat, he had to teach them too. And the Sangat's sitting there, they're very happy that they've given these gifts to Maharaji. And she's like, Maharaj, you know what I wear to decorate myself with. You know what I mascara that I wear. You know what I need to see, what I need. You know that I have nothing for, you have no desire for any of these things. And Guru Arjan Dev Ji, Mata Ji's son, they lay a jar of money. Funne Mahalla Panjwa. And Mara says there, Je kar ave kante, ta sab kishe paai Je kar aave kante ta sab kishe pai hai Har haan sab har haan kante bina sab singar So the first pankti, sorry, the first pankti was Maharaj said Je kar aave kante, if you can't, if your husband Vaheguru comes and sits in your heart then you've got everything anyway. This is the son of Mata Pani Ji that says, this, if you look at this Bani, you think of Mata Ji, you can say that they were singing this, ma, this Bani for their mother. Their mother, Jaikar Ave Kand, her husband would come in her house, Vaiguru would come and sat in her heart, had come and sat in her hirda. The Bani, that, the Shabbat that Maharaj sang when they were sitting on the Dawa, when they were, saying, they were talking about Vaiguru coming and sitting in your hirda. Yuride, Har Ride. And this Shabbat that Maharaj was singing, Punne Mahalla Panjama, Jekar Ave Kantata, Sab Ki Shapai hai. They knew that Maharaj, Mataji didn't need false gene to make her look beautiful. She had the truth things of beauty. She had the truth co coverings of beauty. Jekar Ave Kantata, Sab Ki Shapai hai. Har Haan, Sab Vekar. All of it, without Vai Guru, all these singar, they're just like, they're just corruption. If you look at, if you go into you check that money, Mara says harha. Harha is, there's two words, there's two meanings of harha. The first is that harha is talking to Vaiguru. The other, other word for harha, 
was Guru Arjun Devji talking to their sister-in-law. Their sister-in-law's name was Harha. And Maharaj is saying to Harha, explaining to their sister-in-law that all these decorations are false without Wai Guru. But, Jiskar Vasya Kanta, Ta Sabe Kesh Paiya. Jiskar Ave, Jiskar Vasya Kanta, Ta Sa Sahagani. Savad Bhagani, sorry. Jiskar Ave Kanta, Savad Bhagani. That that person who Vai Guru has come to dwell within, that that person is the greatest, they've got the best, the best fortune. Maharaj is saying, be like that. And this gunjan, this all this stuff that we put on our eyes, what do we need to really see clearly? We need the we need the decoration of Vai Guru's Naam. In Shabbat Hazare, Maharaj talks about applying this eye the eyeliner to your eye. The reason that they used to wear eyeliner is because they used to clean the eyes. That's why they used to wear it. Now it's become probably more for decoration, but before it used to be to clean the eyes. Mara says, what do we need to clean our eyes? We need Vai Guru's name. The Naam is what really clears my eye. That's what I decorate myself with. And this was the mother of Guru Arjun Dev Ji. This is what her PR was for. So there's no wonder that her son, Guru Arjun Dev Ji, was able to sit on that Tatitavi without flinching. There's no wonder there's such a great mother, there's such a great nana behind them, that they were able to sit and have hot sand poured on them. There's no wonder. And the other thing that we want to talk about from Guru Arjun Dev Ji Shahidi is after they were tortured, after they were burnt, they were then given a last request. And before, after they burnt, after they put the Maharaj through that hot torture, there was another, there was another thing that they wanted to do to Maharaj. They wanted to sow Guru Arjun Dev Ji. After all that humiliation, the, the, what they wanted to do after all that torture, they wanted to humiliate the house of Guru Nanak. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to sow Maharaj into a cow hide. So if you can imagine the, a cow, all the insides being taken out, and what's left is that leather. This is how low the thinking was. They wanted to take Maharaj and they wanted to sew them up into a cow hide and beat them. And eventually they would have suffocated having been kept in that cow hide. And Maharaj knew that this is what they wanted to do. So they had the patience. They could sit and they could tolerate that torture of the heat. And then the next thing that they saw, that they were, the Mughals were going to, talk, to humiliate Guru Nanak. They said, for this, this we cannot allow to happen. They can torture my body fine. But what they want to do now is they want to break the heart of the Sikhs. They really want to break the Sikhs now. And in front of them, they want to beat the Guru Sahib in a cowhide. They said, this I'm not allowing them to do. They said, whatever they do to this physical body, I can take that. But when they are going to break the sharda of my Sikhs, I cannot see them do that. So when they were given a last rite, when they said to Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj, what is your last wish? Guru Arjun Dev Ji said, please let me have an Ishnan. Let me go to the river and have an Ishnan. And the Mughals thought, hey, this, you know, this is great. Because as you know, when it's winter and we come in from that cold and we come inside and it gets warm, how our hands swell up and how sometimes they ache from that transition of heat. So when we've gone from hot to cold or from cold to hot, it hurts. So they knew that the worst thing that could happen to Guru Arjun Dev Ji after being boiled in that Tati Tavi, the worst thing for them would be that they'd go into some cold water. So when they heard that Maharaj has requested that we go into the cold water, they reveled in this. And they said, yeah, we, we grant that wish. And from then, Guru Sahib went into that river and they had an Ishnan, the river Ravi, Ravi, and they were never found again. This is the part of the Shihidi sometimes that we don't always get to hear. So Guru Arjun Dev Ji, they requested to go into that river and they were never found again. And that Shahidi, that Pana, it came again going back to that mother. And it's a bendy to all our sisters. If we look at, we might think that, oh, that was the Guru's family. Yeah, they were going to be great. But early in this century, in the 19th century, there was a mother called Mata Mehtab Gorji, whose husband was by Baba Kujan Singh Ji. And their son was Santa Sundar Singh Ji. And these Gursikhs, they, they lived in the footsteps of Guru Sahib. 
Mata Ji, Mata Medak Kaur, every day should be doing countless, countless numbers of Japji Saab Baat, countless numbers of Mool Mantra's job, constant Abhyas of Guru Mantra. The Reni Bani was Gur, Gur Sikhi. This is before they even conceived their child. And ma, ma, their father, uh, Baba Sundar Singh Ji's father, the husband of Mata Medak Kaur, Baba Khajan Singh Ji, they also did countless numbers of Mool Mantra Abhyas. They did countless numbers of Ikkunkar, Satanam, Kartapurk, Nirpao, Nirvair. They could do countless numbers of Moon Mantra Jab and ready, ready for their child to come. So their child, even if you look at them, if you look at their example, they have two sons, Baba San, son Baba Sundar Singh Ji and Baba Indra Singh Ji. And both their child became Mahapurk Ma as well. Both of their child were very enlightened. And where did that Shakti come from? It came from Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. It came from Gurbani, it came from Guru Sikhi Jeevan. And those two parents, they taught their children Santhya themselves. So Baba Sundar Ji, who was, their, who was their Vidya Guru, their Vidya Guru was their father, was a Guru Mukh Pyara. And that is what each one, every single one of us needs to be for our children too. And if we haven't got that Vidya, we do a plenty to Guru Sahib and let's start learning too. These Sakya, Mata Ji, Mata Bibi Pani Ji, they're not from the past, they exist even today. When we bring our children to the Guru, God, what can we do today? Let that be a time when they can sit and learn about their Guru Sahib. Because they're not going to learn about Guru Sahib from school. If we leave it to the teachers at school to teach them, they're never going to learn. So, Wai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wai Guru Ji Ki Fateh, Lachuka Di Maaf.